Well, New York City has been dealing with a surge of migrants, and now the mayor says the city is out of room. Hundreds of migrants have been congregating outside of the Roosevelt Hotel, with many of them sleeping on the streets for days. But today, there are reports the area is now empty. Last month, Democrat Mayor Eric Adams sent representatives to the U.S. southern border to inform officials there the city has no more room. And now the city's deputy mayor for health and human services wants the federal government to take charge. Joining us now is Rodney Scott, distinguished senior fellow for border security and former border patrol chief. Rodney, great to see you again. So what do you make of the situation in New York and are you at all surprised by it? No, I'm not surprised at all. Unfortunately, policy decisions have consequences. And the consequences of this administration literally walking away from border security and creating the chaos that we have on our southwest border, uh, you're just seeing a very, very small snippet of that in New York. And they're freaking out over it. But these cities along the border in uh, Texas, New Mexico, California, Arizona, they've been suffering for this since 2021. Um, and no one's been paying attention. It doesn't surprise me that, that New York is, uh, it actually does surprise me a little bit. They're freaking out this bad as a sanctuary city. But I think they're starting to see the consequences of their policy decisions and their rhetoric. Yeah, and some critics are now alleging that city officials uh, have been basically using these migrants and the long lines outside of the Roosevelt to put pressure on the state and federal officials to get more funding and also to discourage migrants from crossing the southern border. Uh, Rodney, your thoughts on that? To, to, to discourage people from crossing the southwest border, there needs to be a consequence, not free handouts. Uh, the, every administration prior to the Biden administration actually focused on border security and improving border security in some way. Obviously, the last administration uh, did a ton. But this administration has completely walked away from it. And I hear New York now saying the same things as I hear about this administration saying, hey, just give us more money so that we can provide better care and feeding for these people that illegally entered our country. We need to go back to what really truly is the root cause, which is the invitation to come into our country. We need to lock down the border, secure the border, and start focusing on Americans first. Yeah, and as you mentioned, and as we've talked about before, I mean, the border towns in Texas and other states uh, really have been feeling the strain of accommodating this influx of migrants for a while now. Um, but really, they really haven't got the attention like New York. That said, how do we balance the needs of the migrants with the resources of a community, which in many cases is very limited? Yeah, correct. And in many cases, we use the term migrant, but let's be really realistic here. We're talking about illegal aliens that migrated to the United States purely for economic reasons. And if people will slow down and they'll actually look at the video, look at the photographs, many of these people are coming across the border with more cash in hand, well-dressed with a lot of their uh, personal belongings in a way that is not portrayed by mainstream media, if you will, or not highlighted. Um, it, we cannot continue. It's just not a, it's not a sustainable process to continue to give away the United States resources worldwide. We want to help people that really need help. That's why we have asylum laws. But this economic mass migration that's also being used by the cartel to cover up a lot of their illicit activities is causing significant damage not only to the United States, but to people that truly need asylum because they can't get to the front of that line because of all the fraud. Yeah, and as we, we know... We need to secure the border. Yeah, and Ronnie, as we know, it can be extremely dangerous, you know, to make that trek across the southern border. In fact, uh, just yesterday, two bodies were found in the Rio Grande near a floating barrier, which was installed by Texas Governor Greg Abbott, who is actually being sued now by the Justice Department because of those floating barriers. Ronnie, what more do you know about the situation? And also, you know, where is the line draw? When can states kind of uh, protect their own borders? And when does the Fed get involved in that? Yeah, those are some great questions. Fundamentally, securing the border and immigration law is a federal responsibility. Unfortunately, this administration walked away from it. So uh, the, the questions you just asked are questions the states are asking constantly now, internally. Where is that line? When is it an actual invasion when a governor can take action independent of the federal government? Um, back to those buoy barriers really quick. Any loss of life is horrendous. But under this administration's open border policies and the chaos that they've created, there have been thousands of deaths along the border and in that specific river. Uh, I actually, when I was chief, looked at those buoy barriers. We evaluated them and we had decided to deploy them 
to deter illegal aliens from crossing that dangerous river. Those currents can be crazy. We don't have the authority to put it on the south side of the river, or we would do that to keep people out of the river completely. But the idea is to put that barrier up, create a deterrent, and save countless lives by the, the families that choose not to enter that water to begin with. Ronnie, we have a little less than a minute left, but I quickly want to talk uh, about this. The Pentagon is set to pull troops from the southern border, which it deployed earlier this year uh, for about 90 days, as you know, in order to help Border Patrol officials with the end of Title 42. What type of impact do you think that had, having the troops there, and what kind of impact do you think uh, it will leave, their presence leaving, will, will it leave a type of void? So traditionally, having the military deployed to the border helps out tremendously by taking off, uh, taking resources or taking jobs that Border Patrol, um, taking jobs that Border Patrol agents would normally do, and that allows the agents to go back out to the field. Unfortunately, though, in this administration, all that having the military did on the border was speed up the catch and release process. It actually speed up the, sped up the flow of illegal aliens being released into the United States. So really, they're pulling off the border now isn't going to do anything for border security, uh, negative or positive in any way. Uh, it could have made a big difference, but the way they were deployed and the way it was implemented this time, uh, that didn't really make a difference. Ronnie, thank you so much for coming on, for all your insights. We really appreciate it.